Hello everybody. This is the topic on uh, food crystallization and in this lecture I will focus on or I will discuss on the conditions required for crystallization. As you can see on the slide here, products like chocolate or margarine consist of uh, fat crystals. Where do these crystals come from? So, for example, in, in the chocolate, the crystals actually uh, or come from the cocoa butter. This cocoa butter is actually the fat uh, derived from cocoa and the cocoa butter gives a special uh, unique property of uh, chocolate in terms of the melting uh, property as well as the texture of the chocolate. And the margarine is made from vegetable, uh, vegetable oil such as palm oil or corn oil and the crystallization is induced uh, to produce the fat crystal uh, and increase the solid fat which form the plastic texture of the margarine. And what about the, what is this, this is the uh, sugar candy. And the sugar candy is basically made from sugar and the sugar is also crystallized to form the hard uh, crystal. So obviously the products contain different types of crystal but uh, you must also understand that the way the crystals are formed during crystallization process are also different. So let's us uh, explore in more detail shall we? Let's look at the most common example of crystal that we eat every day the table sugar or sucrose commercially sugar is produced from uh, sugar cane i'm sure everyone ever, uh, knows about uh, sugar cane this is my favorite when i was a small kid and sugar can also uh, be produced from sugar beet in some countries like uh, japan they have a production of sugar from sugar beet. So the white granulated sugar that um, we see here can be uh, produced from a, a controlled crystallization of the sugar syrup or the juice which we, which we extract from the sugar cane or from the sugar beet. So the sugar juice is basically um, technically is a sugar solution. So when we say a solution, we have uh, sucrose. We have sucrose as the solute and water as the solvent. So this is what we have in this um, sugar uh, syrup or the su uh, or the juice that we obtain from the sugar cane. So this is actually one example of the crystallization which uh, starts from a solution. Honey is another example of uh, sugar solution because um, it contains soluble sugar such as sucrose, fructose, and uh, glucose. Maybe you have seen that um, after, after you store honey for a long time, um, you can see some of the sugar actually uh, crystallize, as you can see uh, in the picture here. So you can see some uh, like a solid uh, suspended in the uh, liquid uh, honey. So this is again another form of or another example of uh, crystallization which uh, start from a uh, solution. So in the previous slides we have seen um, examples of crystallization which uh, starts from a uh, solution. Uh, on this slide, um, uh, we can also actually start the crystallization uh, process from uh, a melt okay so as you can see on in this uh, picture here we have uh, a chocolate melt containing mixtures of uh, triglycerides okay triglycerides and these tri triglycerides um, have different melting points when we <coughs> cool the chocolate melt below the melting point of the triglycerides they will crystallize to form a solid crystal. So in the process of chocolate making, this uh, step is called um, tempering. OK, 
okay so I hope we can read more about this uh, tempering step in the chocolate making uh, and this process or this step has to be controlled very carefully to ensure we get the right type of crystals and here is another example of crystallization from uh, a melt in this case we can start from uh, a liquid uh, vegetable oil so this is actually the uh, liquid vegetable oil and it can be any uh, kind of vegetable oil such as palm oil, corn oil, canola oil and by cooling down um, the triglycerides or by cooling down the, the oil it will cause the triglycerides in the oil to crystallize and again it will form a solid crystal so this will increase the solid fat content and form a plastic uh, texture uh, products um, which is the margarine as we see uh, here in this picture so now let's look at the crystallization um, starting from a solution I will use uh, sucrose as, as an example here to explain so at any temperature um, okay uh, let, let's refer to this um, diagram of the uh, graph of solubility of sucrose in water here so we plot the percent solubility of sucrose uh, as a function of uh, temperature so for example we can see um, at uh, 30 degree okay at 30 degree celsius around here and we can see what's the solubility so we can uh, read the, the value of solubility at 30 degree celsius for sucrose is around 68 just make it round 68 percent so um, this means that if you have 100 uh, ml of um, water at 30 degree Celsius, we can dissolve up to 68 gram sucrose. But now if you add more than 68 gram, the sugar won't dissolve because the solution has become super saturated. So when you add more sugar or more solute above its uh, solubility value, it cannot dissolve anymore because the solvent, which is the water in this case, cannot take up anymore and or cannot uh, solubilize anymore. So um, we can plot a graph of uh, percent solubility uh, against temperature as uh, shown here. And the curve, this curve that you see here, is called a solubility curve okay and uh, obviously you can see as we increase the temperature in this direction the solubility of the sucrose or the solute also will increase meaning that at higher uh, temperature uh, here more solids will be dissolved uh, but at lower temperature for example here uh, less uh, solute will be dissolved and the curve that uh, the solubility curve here is also known as equilibrium solubility curve any point on this line yeah any point on this line is the value of equilibrium equilibrium solubility or um, we give the notation c eq okay any point on this line is um, uh, the solubility value of the sucrose at equilibrium for the crystallization to occur we actually need a thermodynamic uh, driving force or the dia penggerak in the case of uh, crystallization from a solution uh, for example a sugar solution that we are discussing here the thermodynamic driving force is uh, super saturation okay the supersaturation is uh, generated when the concentration of a solute exceeds its equilibrium solubility. So as uh, we have seen in the previous slide, uh, in the solubility curve here, the, the line here represents the solubility curve, uh, equilibrium uh, solubility curve, and any line, any point on the line here is actually equi uh, equilibrium uh, solubility. And any point above this line is actually in a supersaturated state so we can um, 
express the super saturation of the solution uh, by taking the difference between the concentration of a saturated uh, solution let's say we give notation not, notation c s s as the concentration of the uh, sup, uh, of the saturated uh, solution and minus the concentration or uh, at the equilibrium which is the, uh, the equilibrium uh, solubility so the delta c which is the uh, degree of the super saturation of the solution is the difference between the concentration of the saturated solution minus the concentration of the uh, equilibrium uh, at the equilibrium uh, solubility so meaning that uh, for example at this point Okay, so uh, this is the here the C EQ value, and the difference between this is the delta C. Super saturation of the solution also can be expressed as uh, S, and we take the ratio of C as S to the C EQ. Okay, now let's uh, examine the solubility curve uh, more uh, carefully. The, okay, we have a solubility curve here. So this is uh, the equilibrium solubility curve or so equilibrium solubility line. Any point uh, below this line, this is actually the undersaturated uh, un under uh, state and we cannot get any crystallization. Uh, or crystallization is uh, thermodynamically uh, impossible in this uh, undersaturated region. Um, if we dissolve any, say, um, seed crystal here, uh, it will just uh, dissolve without uh, growing. Okay. Um, whereas the region above this line, if we go above this line, so any point here, is in the super saturated state and uh, crystallization is thermodynamically possible or theoretically possible but it is not always um, the case meaning that although we have uh, the solution is already super saturated meaning that we are already above uh, the solubility line here uh, and by right we should get a crystallization to start or to occur but there is actually um, a zone, so let, let me draw, say, a line. And this line uh, not necessarily is here, it can be anywhere. So there is a zone between the solubility blue curve here and the dashed line. And this zone is known as metastable zone. What this uh, zone means is um, in this, uh, anywhere between, anywhere in this metastable zone, the spontaneous uh, or homogeneous uh, nucleation will not occur. So the keyword here is spontaneous, meaning that in the metastable zone, we would not get any spontaneous uh, nucleation and uh, the supersaturated solution will remain uh, in the solution form without any crystallization indefinitely provided provided there is no uh, foreign particles such as dust or any if we had any seed crystal because um, um, if, if we had any if we add say a seed crystal in the metastable zone, zone this uh, seed crystal can grow okay so in other words in a metastable zone, we cannot get spontaneous nucleation, but if we add seed crystal, or if there is, if, or if there is any dust or any uh, foreign particles, uh, it can grow. Uh, it can grow. Yeah. Um, so if we want to get a spontaneous nucleation, we have to actually raise the concentration of the solution not only past the solubility uh, line. Into the super saturated into the super saturated state, and not uh, but we have to pass also through the metastable zone, so that we get into this zone. This is called labile 
zone. So in the in the labile zone, the supersaturated solution is in the um, thermodynamic uh, in the non-equilibrium uh, state and very unstable. So it will try to uh, crystallize because we, uh, um, uh, to 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 go into the lower uh, energy state. Okay, another thing that I want to point out here is the the width or this of this uh, metastable zone. Uh, it can be bigger or it can be smaller. So it depends on uh, several uh, factors uh, during the process of crystallization. For example, uh, the stirring, the solvent that we use, the temperature, pressure, the presence of impurities and the surface characteristics of the crystallization vessel as well. All these factors actually can determine uh, the width uh, or the size of this uh, metastable zone. So, okay, let's summarize what we have learned uh, so far in this uh, short lecture. So, we have seen that uh, we can start a crystallization from a uh, solution. So, this common, um, the common example would be the crystallization of um, sugar from sugar cane or sugar beet. Or we can also uh, start a crystallization from uh, milk, for example, in the making of chocolate or margarine. Uh, from uh, chocolate milk or from the vegetable liquid oil. So, and we also learn about the solub solubility curve. So, uh, we can plot the percent of um, solute against temperature and we can uh, determine the solubility value or the equilibrium solu solubility value of the solute at uh, different uh, temperatures. And um, we have seen that uh, the solubility uh, increase as we increase the uh, temperature and we have defined the meaning of supersaturation and the metastable zone in the next uh, lecture we will discuss in more detail um, based on the solubility curve how we can um, uh, get the crystallization uh, to occur by uh, controlling the temperature the rate of uh, cooling and the concentration